Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here. If it wasn't obvious, it's that time of year again. Not only are the holidays such a joy-filled time of year, but it's fun to look back on how mediocre the year was and how much fun previous Christmases were. But I'm in my mid-twenties now, so I want to take a look back at my very first Christmas ever. One hour later. I was less than one year old when I had my first Christmas, so I don't remember much of it. So I'm going to do the next best thing and remember the other first Christmas ever. Holiday specials, the one surefire way to get pumped up for any holiday of the year. As of this point in the series, Spongebob has had three holiday specials. Episode 26, Scaredy Pants from Season 1, which was a Halloween episode. Episode 32, Valentine's Day, which was a Valentine's Day episode. And even an April Fool's Day episode. Episode 38, Fools in April. But there is one important holiday that we have yet to talk about with Spongebob. Easter. Even after all these years, we still have no Spongebob Easter special. But we're not here to talk about the day Jesus Christ rose, we're here to talk about the day he was born. Christmas Who is the episode where Spongebob learns about the holiday of Christmas and wants to bring it to the city of Bikini Bottom, much to Squidward's dismay. This episode aired on December 6, 2000 and is the first of many things for the series. It's the first 22-minute episode of the series, the first Christmas-themed episode of the series, the first appearance of Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parrot, the first episode to have an alternate theme song, and of course, the first episode with a question mark in the title. For almost every episode that aired up to this point, they have been 11 minutes long and two of those episodes take up a half hour time slot, whereas this episode is roughly twice the length of a normal episode and this would be the only episode airing during that half hour time slot. And these kinds of episodes would show up almost every season for the rest of the series. Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parrot are some of the most notable secondary characters and they would only show up during some of the 22 minute episodes, the hour long TV movies, and a couple other occasions. Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parrot make their debut appearances in this episode. Patchy the Pirate is played by Tom Kenny, the voice of Spongebob and Gary, and Potty the Parrot is a pair of string puppet who, in seasons 2 and 3, is voiced by Spongebob creator Steven Hillenburg. Patchy is a stereotypical pirate and is the self-proclaimed president of the Spongebob Squarepants fan club as he claims he is Spongebob's biggest fan. What? Potty is a sassy parrot sidekick of Patchy. Despite being a live action portion of the episode, these segments also feel very cartoony. The Patchy segments were created because Steven Hillenberg and the crew thought about how they can make an episode 22 minutes long. Patchy the Pirate was made as an homage to children's TV hosts from low budget local access channels and... Merry Christmas! That's right, Potty! It is Christmas! You can tell they were catered to children. The Patchy segments take place in Encino, California, and they would relate to whatever the actual Spongebob portion of the episode would be about. In this case, the Patchy segments are about getting ready for Christmas, and Patchy talks about the first Christmas ever celebrated in Bikini Bottom. The Patchy segments don't really add anything to the cartoon as a whole, and are more considered a separate portion of the episode altogether. Patchy does show up less and less as the series goes on, but he does appear in every 22 minute episode in seasons 2 and 3. As for this being the first Christmas episode in the series, there are only three official Christmas specials in the show as of 2022. This episode, episode 335, It's a Spongebob Christmas from season 8, and episode 518, Spongebob's Road to Christmas from season 13. Nickelodeon counts episode 453, Goons on the Moon from season 11 as a Christmas episode because Santa appears in the final third of the episode, and that's how they advertised it, but I don't think of it as a Christmas special. For the theme song in this episode, Painty the Pirate has a wreath on him and the song is sung by a ladies chorus as opposed to Painty the Pirate and the children that usually sing it and this image appears at the end of the theme song. As for the question mark in this episode's title card, Christmas who? Yup. As this is the first Christmas episode and the first of everything else I just mentioned, it must have a lot to live up to. So let's watch this episode and see how well it holds up. So the first thing we see is Penny the Pirate with a wreath signifying it's a Christmas episode. A ladies chorus sings the theme song, this image appears, and then the French narrator introduces us to the president of Spongebob's fan club, Patchy the Pirate. Patchy was getting ready for Christmas when he hits himself in the eye with his hook. That's why it always helps to have an eye patch on standby. His parrot Potty appears and says Merry Christmas. 
Patchy then shows what Spongebob and Patrick are doing to get ready for Santa Claus. Patchy is making cookie dough, which Potty wants to eat, but Patchy was refusing to let him. Then a bell rings three times and Patchy decided to open fan mail. After getting into a fight with Potty, Patchy reads a letter from a 10 year old and says that Christmas wasn't always celebrated in Bikini Bottom. Potty eats Patchy's cookie dough, and Patchy started to tell the story of Spongebob's very first Christmas. The Spongebob portion of the episode starts up, and Spongebob plans on sneaking up on Sandy to show her a karate move. Sandy plugs in some Christmas lights, and Spongebob thinks there's a fire, and he tries to save her. He finds out there was no fire, and Sandy was surprised that Spongebob doesn't know about Christmas. She tells him more about the holiday, and the next day, at the Krusty Krab, Spongebob says, And everyone pretends to like the fruitcake! Wrong, sir! My dad liked fruitcake, and he never lied to me! Spongebob was telling Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs about Christmas, and how you can write a letter to Santa Claus, and tell him what you want, and he'll bring it to you on Christmas Eve. Mr. Krabs was excited, and so was Patrick, but of course, Squidward didn't seem remotely interested at all. Patrick ripped his paper, and Spongebob showed him how to write a letter. Later that day, Spongebob showed off his new mechanism that can shoot bottles to the surface so they can get to Santa. That's not the North Pole! Mr. Krabs gave Spongebob his letter, so did Patrick, as well as other citizens of Bikini Bottom. Squidward is still furious about everybody believing in Santa Claus because he doesn't. After everybody else sent their letters to the surface, they start to get ready for Christmas and Spongebob and Patrick sing a song getting so into the spirit. Everybody around town is getting ready, and even Squidward's house is decorated, which Squidward doesn't like. Everybody was excited for Christmas, but after the song, Squidward closed his blinds. It cuts back to Patchy, and it goes to a commercial break. Break time! One break later. Okay, back to the show. The show resumes, and Patchy continues telling the story. Spongebob sends the last letters and realizes Squidward hasn't written one yet. He runs to Squidward's house, but Squidward refuses to write a letter and continues to retaliate that he doesn't believe in Santa. And he says that by writing a letter, he'll lose the following. My self-respect, my sanity, my lunch. But he didn't say he would lose his integrity, so therefore, I would still write a letter. Everybody else in town wants Squidward to join in on the fun, but Squidward refuses to budge. Everybody else stays up all night, singing and waiting for Santa Claus, but by morning, he doesn't come. They all get mad at Spongebob and leave. Spongebob and Patrick think he's running late by stopping for something to eat because fat guys get hungry. Patrick's living proof of that! More time goes by and Santa still doesn't show up and Patrick leaves, disappointed. And so does a Sandman. Squidward wakes up and starts teasing Spongebob. He takes a picture of him and starts teasing him about Christmas. Spongebob started to get sad, but he gave Squidward a present because he didn't want Squidward to feel left out on the celebration. Squidward opens a present and finds out that it's a clarinet made out of driftwood and can play Dance of the Sugar Plums. Squidward was absolutely touched by the present, but also feels like a donkey because of how he treated Spongebob just because he was trying to spread a little joy. Spongebob started to take the decorations down when Squidward showed up dressed as Santa Claus. Squidward fell off the roof and Spongebob was in absolute shock to see Santa, and fainted, not realizing it was Squidward. Man, I wish I could have acted like that when my parents took me to see Santa when I was young. Spongebob was so happy to see Santa, but asked a few questions about his image and Squidward came up with excuses for them. Spongebob thanked Santa for bringing Christmas to Bikini Bottom and Squidward said Spongebob did that. And Spongebob was so overjoyed, he fainted and Gary took him home. Then a little girl shows up asking for a present. Squidward went inside and came back out giving the girl a wrench. Why not a hammer? Then more townspeople showed up asking for presents, and Squidward ran back into his house, coming out giving more and more of his own belongings for the town. By the time it was all over, Squidward had given away everything just to make Spongebob happy. Then Spongebob showed up telling Squidward about Santa arriving. Squidward shooed him away and discovered a note at the door, and this note was from the real Santa Claus thanking him for help. He then sees the real Santa flying in the sky. Squidward says he's insane and goes inside with his new clarinet, and Santa flies away, and the Spongebob segment of the episode ends. It cuts back to Patchy the Pirate, who's playing with a homemade Spongebob and Patrick on a boat, which he wears as a hat. He takes off the hat and finds Potty left him a present in the form of Yoshi eggs. I wouldn't eat those. Patchy stands under the mistletoe, and Potty tries to kiss him. The French narrator says goodnight and happy holidays to the audience, and the entire episode ends. 
So that was Christmas Who, and there is quite a lot to say about this episode. First, let's get this out of the way. The Patchy segments. I do think this is a good introduction to what Patchy and Potty are all about, but looking back in retrospect, I wish it wasn't so obvious that these were catered to children. Obviously, the whole Spongebob series is a kid's show, but the thing is, these segments would be more appealing to all ages, like the rest of the show, if these scenes weren't so apparent that they were for children. I don't have a problem with these segments being low budget, not at all. Because having Potty be a parrot puppet gives these segments a certain level of charm you wouldn't see if Potty was done with CGI or by training a real life bird. It's also a shame because one of my all time favorite gags in this show was from these Patchy segments. And that is when Patchy grabs Potty and the puppeteer falls from the ceiling. It's so funny and makes me laugh every time. The name and address withheld is also funny to me and I absolutely love all the banter between Patchy and Potty. I think the banter is what makes these segments for everybody, and Tom Kenny does an amazing job playing Patchy. These segments are kinda skippable though, and don't really add anything to the cartoon. And that would be fine if Patchy didn't feel like he was talking down to kids sometimes. I know that's what the crew was going for with these segments, and for that, I commend them. But in my opinion, they would be a little better for everybody if they didn't feel like they were so catered to children. If it wasn't for the charm of the potty string puppet, the hilarious banter between him and Patchy, and some good gags every so often, there would be nothing memorable about these segments. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the Spongebob part of the episode. I love so much about this part of the special. I love how Patrick keeps ripping his paper and uses a ripped up piece of paper for his letter for Santa, and how he keeps saying Santa's actions are like a genie. Just like a genie? Well, he's not wrong. It's so great seeing all the characters in Bikini Bottom in the Christmas spirit. I like how Spongebob immediately tries to save Sandy when he thinks there's a fire, and how fed up with Spongebob she looks when he gets her wet. The actions Sandy does when talking about Christmas are funny. However, this is something I always found kind of off. After Sandy tells Spongebob about Christmas, she just doesn't appear at all throughout the rest of the episode, not even in the second half, and I never understood that. Since she's the only one in Bikini Bottom who knew about Christmas at this point in time, you'd think she would show up at least once to reinforce what Spongebob is saying about Christmas. I guess maybe she doesn't show up because Spongebob would be the one to get blamed for when Santa doesn't show up, so Squibber would make it up to him, but I'm not sure. It is kind of nitpicking, so whatever. Speaking of Squidward, he is astounding in this episode. He starts off being a Scrooge and not wanting to get in the Christmas spirit and saying Santa doesn't exist. When it seems he's right, he rubs it in Spongebob's face, and then he's so happy by the gifts Spongebob gives him, he feels instant remorse for what he's done and tries to make it up to Spongebob. And while he does accomplish that, he gives away all his stuff as karma and gets a note from the real Santa saying he's done a good job. I love Squidward so much in this episode. I remember once my dad said he kinda didn't like Squidward cause he was a little too nice here, but that's the point. It's the holidays, and he's had a change of heart after getting a present from Spongebob. He's supposed to have a turnaround, Dad! That's basically the other point of this episode, and a lot of other Christmas specials. And that's a good segue to our next point of interest, the episode's premise. Something I always loved was how this episode, and the other official Spongebob Christmas specials for that matter, never felt like they were parodying anything. They always felt like their own thing, and that's awesome. And considering the setting of the show, it makes a lot of sense for this episode to be about introducing Christmas to Bikini Bottom. Santa Claus can't breathe underwater, and Sandy, the only land creature, is the only character who knows about Christmas at this point. She tells Spongebob, the main protagonist, about Christmas. Spongebob then tells everybody else in town, and everybody else is excited except Squidward. After things don't quite go as planned, Squidward teases Spongebob and then makes up for his errors after getting a beautiful present from Spongebob. And since Christmas is new to Bikini Bottom in this episode, everything else also makes sense. Since Santa only comes when people are sleeping, that's why he didn't come to Bikini Bottom, because everybody was awake except Squidward. And because they were new to Christmas, this was probably something that Spongebob either forgot about, that Sandy never actually explained to him, or was just too excited to sleep and wanted to stay awake to meet Santa. Because it's Spongebob, why wouldn't he want to meet Santa on his first visit to Bikini Bottom? And with Christmas being well established in this episode, it appears or is mentioned a few times in the series in the future. Santa Claus is also really funny by just how he's constantly laughing in this episode, and of course, we can't forget the song. 
The song in this episode is amazing. It's so catchy and all the sequences are beautifully animated. It flows so well and it's fun seeing everybody get in the spirit by singing the song. And the high notes Mr. Krabs sings at the end are hilarious. This has always been one of my go-to Christmas songs whenever the holiday season comes around. Sometimes I pop this episode in the DVD player just to listen to the song. This song is better than new songs coming out in the 2020s. Have you ever heard new songs coming out in 2022? I have, and thank God my grandpa hasn't. Last but not least, let's go over some fun facts about this episode. When Patchy is playing with the boat and talks about Christmas Island, Ahoy Patrick, it's Christmas Island! This painting shows Bikini Atoll with Christmas decorations. Christmas Island is a real place in real life, located many kilometers off the northwest coast of Australia. When the puppeteer falls from the ceiling after Patchy grabs Potty, it's actually a mannequin and not an actual human being. And that definitely makes sense. The audio commentary from the Season 2 DVD states that the cookie dough Patchy made is actually mashed potatoes. Santa Claus at the very end of the Spongebob segment is played by Mike Bell, who also played this fisherman in the Spongebob Squarepants movie. And during the song, when Mr. Krabs sings high notes at the end, Mr. Krabs' usual voice actor, Clancy Brown, does not sing those notes. Instead, D. Bradley Baker, who voices Bubble Bass, sang those notes. This episode is an instant classic. It introduces a lot of cool staples for the series going forward, like 22 minute episodes and Patchy the Pirate, and it does that very well. It also does exactly what a good, timeless Christmas special should do, getting people in the spirit while also being very rewatchable so it'll be just as fun to watch year after year. And man, has this episode aged well. This has always been one of my go-to holiday specials whenever Christmas is approaching. I would always watch it every year on Christmas Eve during the day, and Christmas Day at least once, whether before or after opening presents. This episode is the best Christmas Who episode the show has ever made. There is so much this episode does right, and that is one of the many reasons why this is one of, if not the best holiday special of the whole show, and one of the best episodes of the entire series. Christmas Who is an absolutely classic episode. It is nothing short of awesome, and it's a great Christmas episode to watch every year. The song is absolutely amazing, the characters are so strong, and it introduces the concept of Christmas to Bikini Bottom in an amazing way. Even if the patchy segments are catered towards children, at least they can still be funny to watch, even if they don't add anything to the actual cartoon. And this episode is also the first of so many important things to the series, which just adds to its importance. It's a timeless episode that has aged pretty well, and is still great to watch to this day. But even after going through all that, I still can't remember my first Christmas ever. Even my mom doesn't remember it, so that's just going to make all Christmases in the future even harder to remember.